Are you headed to Rome this year? Have you planned a perfect trip, but you're looking for a few extra things that you need to know before you go? Well, this video are tons of tips on mistakes to avoid and things not to do while you're visiting the incredible city of Rome, Italy. I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler. I've been to 65 countries and lived in five. I've actually lived in Italy. I have lots of tips and tricks to make your trips easier, more fun, and more seamless. This video shares mistakes to avoid about food, accommodation, attractions, when to go, as well as cultural tips. So let's go ahead and get started. The first mistake to avoid is going in August, if you can avoid it. I know that sometimes you only have summer vacation, but if you can avoid August, please don't go in August. One, it's super hot and not everywhere has air conditioning. Number two, everyone in Europe is on vacation at the same time in August. So some of the places will be closed in Rome, not the major, major tourist attractions, but some local places will be closed. In addition, everybody's on vacation, so everybody is bombarding Rome at the same time. Finally, everything is packed. If you want to go to the Vatican or you want to see the Colosseum, going in August, the lines are so, so long. So if you can avoid it, don't go in August. My favorite times to go to Rome are sort of April, early May, or mid-September to mid-October. Beautiful times to go, shoulder season. Things are not so expensive as they are in August or the middle of summer, and the weather is absolutely beautiful. The next mistake to avoid when you're planning your trip is assuming that you can see Rome in a day. I never recommend going to Europe and trying to see Rome, London, Paris, Madrid, all of that in one trip. Make your trip more localized. If you're going to go to Rome, spend three or four days at a minimum in Rome and then maybe take some day trips outside of Rome. Maybe you can tack on Rome to a Naples trip along with the Amalfi Coast, but even if you do that, I would plan on about two weeks. Rome is an incredible city with so much to see and do and people to meet. It is well worth spending three or four days in this incredible city. Also, if I'm only staying a couple of days in Rome, I don't recommend getting an Airbnb. One, it's a little more cumbersome to find. It's harder to get your taxi to and from. You also probably don't have somebody to ask like you have a concierge at a hotel. And it is more likely not to have AC if you're there in the middle of the summer. Additionally, in an Airbnb, things are different. So your coffee maker is going to be a little bit different. Your AC is going to work a little bit differently. And if you're only there a couple of days, it's not worth spending time figuring stuff out in your Airbnb where you can just stay in a hotel and have everything smooth and seamless and somebody to ask for recommendations and suggestions. There are many cultural mistakes to avoid, but a few important ones are to us not assume that everybody speaks English and also don't assume speaking louder means that they're going to understand you. It is Italian is the language in the city of Rome and there is a specific dialect in Rome and it's great to learn a few words in Italian just to show a little bit of respect for the people of the city of Rome. Another cultural thing to avoid is the coffee culture. It's very different than it is in the rest of the world. A lot of the Italians actually stand up drinking their coffee and also in the middle of the afternoon or morning, you might find a bar where you have to go over to the register pay for your coffee and order your coffee over there and then walk over to the bar and tell the barista with your little receipt what type of coffee you had. Then you just stand there, add your sugar, take a quick sip, it's all over with and then out the door you go. Another aspect of the coffee culture to avoid is don't drink cappuccino in the middle of the afternoon. A cappuccino is a breakfast drink. If you want to drink a little bit of milk, what you do is you ask for an espresso macchiato in the afternoon, which is an espresso with a little bit of milk foam on top in a demi tasse. That is the way to go in the afternoon. Please do not order a cappuccino at three o'clock. Couple of things to avoid when walking around the city of Rome. First is your shoes, but we'll talk about that in a minute when we get to to all of the clothing that you need to bring and not bring. One is make sure to look right, left, and right when you're crossing the street. Roman drivers and Best Buy drivers are crazy, so you want to make sure that you're paying attention when you get ready to cross the road. Also walking around, be very careful of pickpockets. It's a big city and there are lots of pickpockets in Rome. One thing that they might do, they might come up and hand you something for free and then demand money or hand you something for free and then 
somebody else is reaching in your bag while they are giving you something for free. Another thing is if you're carrying your phone or you have a bag sort of hanging on the side and you're walking down the side of the street, it is not uncommon for someone or two people to come on a Vespa drive by and grab your phone out of your hand. I'm not saying this happens all the time, but I am saying pay attention to your surroundings and prepare yourself and do be aware so you are not a victim to a pickpocket. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so other travelers like you will get the opportunity to see this video because YouTube will share it with them. Also, if you have a top tip or mistake to avoid when going to Rome, make sure to put it in the comments below. Let's talk about mistakes to avoid when you are booking your attractions, where you're going, and things that you are doing. The first mistake to avoid, and it's a biggie, is booking your attractions at the last minute. If you wanna go see the Vatican, you wanna go see the Colosseum, you wanna do all these things, you need to book these long in advance if you want the best time slots. And speaking of time slots, don't show up late to your time slot and be aware that sometimes there is a line before the line. So sometimes if you're there, you have a 5 p.m. time slot, they want you to get in line at 4.30 in line number one to go over to line number two with the five o'clock time slot. So do pay attention to the instructions on each of your tickets as to when you're supposed to show up and what you're supposed to do. Another tip that I have that is a big deal is to book your big sites at off time. So for example, I went to go see the Sistine Chapel on a morning, early, early, early sunrise tour. Yes, it was full. Yes, there's always people at the Sistine Chapel, but this time I was actually able to see the floor because there weren't so many people there and I could look up and I could see everything that was there. And another one that I recommend on an off time is going to see the Colosseum late in the afternoon or in the evening as it is starting to get dark. One, it's cooler in the Colosseum and two, there are not nearly as many people going. So sunrise at the Sistine Chapel and after hours at night for the Colosseum. Also something to note when booking these big sites, sometimes their websites are really glitchy. So if you can't get your ticket booked the first try, then go back a couple hours later and book it then. But remember, do it long in advance. One mistake to avoid, and it's really a thing to do, not to as a mistake to avoid, is do the Bici Bachi Vespa Tour. One of my favorite things to do in Rome, and I do recommend doing it as soon as you arrive in town. To go by the Vatican, to actually go see the Colosseum, they take you up into the hills overlooking all of Rome. It is the best tour, and I have put the information in the description below to book a tour with them. Also, if you're interested in the top 20 things that I must have on every trip with me, you can also go to the description below and download that free guide. Another couple of mistakes to avoid with attractions and things to do, don't go dancing in the fountains. That is only for the movies like La Dolce Vita. Also, you're not allowed to use a flash for photography at most sites, so no flash photography, which is very rare when you're using your phone anyway. The final mistake to avoid with attractions, etc., is not booking a food tour. Food tours are amazing, and it's my number one thing to do the first night I arrive in any city. One, you get to meet people, you're talking food, wine, you're enjoying. You're also going to have a guide that is going to be sharing with you all of the tips and tricks as well as some great restaurant ideas. The two companies that I like in Rome is Rome Food Tours and Devour Tours. Again, put all the details in the description below. So since we're talking about food, let's continue on the subject of mistakes to avoid with food. Number one is about water. There are about 2,500 water fountains in the city of Rome, and yes, they are safe to drink from. All you have to do is bring an empty bottle with you. You can fill them up. Also, you can drink from them directly. Sometimes you have to do this. Other times you can actually plug the bottom of them and water will spurt out the top where you can drink it like a normal water fountain. That is a great way. There's no use in wasting your money and wasting your time buying water in a grocery store or in a shop. Another mistake to avoid is eating right at all of the major tourist sites. If you see people hawking their wares and trying to hand you a menu, that's probably not the place to eat. Also, if you see a touristic menu on a board right in front of the restaurant with all of the pictures of what they serve, again, that's probably not the place to eat. Those places are going to be more expensive and the quality of food is not likely to be as high. 
One tip I do recommend, say you're at one of the major sites, just go off a block or two blocks away and start wandering the streets. One, it's an incredible city to go wander the streets, but two, you're likely to find an incredible local restaurant with local fare. A couple of the most famous dishes in Rome are salt and bocca, which is veal wrapped in prosciutto with sage and served with gnocchi, which is typical. Also, carbonara is also from Rome. So even though we see in the United States and throughout the world, all Italian food is like pasta and pizza, each particular city and province in Italy has different foods and things that they are famous for. So those two are two things that you definitely want to eat when you're in Rome. A couple final mistakes with food and reservations. One, don't make reservations inside in the evening, especially in the middle of the summer, unless you know that that restaurant has air conditioning. It is usually hotter inside the restaurant than sitting out front. So when you're making a reservation, do make sure that if you're gonna sit inside, that they have AC. Additionally, Aperol spritzes, I love my Aperol spritzes and my Campari spritzes, but those are aperitivos. Those are not supposed to be eaten with your meals. You're supposed to have wine or water, not an Aperol spritz. You're supposed to be doing that from six to eight before you go to dinner. Avoid going to eat at the wrong time in Rome. Breakfast is sort of seven to 10 a.m. Lunch is 12.30 to 2.30 with the height being around 1.30 in the afternoon. Aperitivo time is when people start to go out, stroll, and go grab a drink with friends. That's typically between 6 and 8 p.m. And then dinners are between 8 and 11. Most likely around 9 p.m. is the busiest. So avoid going to eat at the wrong time. Now some transportation mistakes to avoid. One is taxis. You're not going to be able to stand on the street and flag down a taxi like you can in New York or in LA or San Francisco. There are taxi ranks or taxi stands. You're going to see sitting on the side of the road, you're going to see like 10 taxis lined up. That is where you go find a taxi. What you want to do is you want to walk to the front of the line and that is a taxi that is going to take you somewhere. In addition to going to a taxi rank to get a taxi, you can download one of the apps in Rome. The best one I think is IT, IT Taxi. It's very seamless, works a little bit like Uber. Speaking of Uber, they physically have it, but it is always, it is not always the most reliable. So I would recommend downloading IT Taxi or free taxi, which is not free, or using a taxi rank or taxi stand instead of trying to use Uber because perhaps you go ahead and it says the Uber is ready or it's on its way and then all of a sudden it disappears. So I would use the local taxis over Uber when I'm in Rome. Now with public transportation, well, the first mistake to avoid is assuming that it's always on time. This is not Switzerland, this is Italy. Things do not always run on time. Trains leaving the city tend to run better, uh, more likely on time. Also, the metro tends to run somewhat on time because there's not traffic, but buses, no way. Rarely are they on time. And you want to make sure when you get a bus ticket, a train ticket, not the metro because you actually have to validate it to get in the metro system, but with trains and buses, you have to go to the little kiosk. There's a little thing, little green thing, where you actually validate your ticket before you get on the bus or before you get on the train. Big no-no if you don't do that. Speaking of trains and taxis, perhaps you don't want to pay for a taxi from the airport into the heart of Rome. It can be quite expensive because coming in from the Rome airport is a 40 minute drive. What I do recommend is taking the Leonardo Express. It runs all of the time. It's about 30 to 40 minutes and it is anywhere from eight to 14 euros. That is a great way to get into the main train station of Rome. So instead of taking an expensive taxi, the Leonardo Express is a way to go. Now let's talk about clothing and what not to do. First and foremost, the rules for the Vatican, the Sistine Chapel, and all of the churches are strictly adhered to. So, ladies, cover your shoulders. You have to cover the first part of your arm. You have to cover to your knees as well. Men, you have to have a sleeve shirt down here, halfway down your arm. You have to have shorts at least to your knees as well. And again, no flip-flops. They will not let you come in. What I do suggest is when you are traveling around Rome during the day, ladies, you can just bring a wrap or a scarf with you. Perhaps you can bring a sarong that you can turn into a skirt if you need to or a wrap if you need to. That is a great 
great way in case you are in the middle and you want to pop into a church and they do have restrictions for your clothing, you can just pull it out of your bag, wrap it around yourself, and you're good to go. In general, in Rome, you don't want to wear midriffs. You don't want to wear flip-flops. You do want to be, it's a, it is a fashionable city, but you do want to wear clothes that are appropriate and not too revealing. Also, they're not big on baseball caps. They're not big on flip-flops, as I've mentioned before. And I would recommend they do like linen. They like linen in Rome. So ladies, linen pants, linen dresses, that is a great way to get around Rome. And also in the middle of the summer when it's super hot, that linen is very cool and a great thing to wear. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it is important to have good walking shoes. You're going to be walking 10 to 20,000 steps a day. So wear shoes, don't get brand new shoes. Wear shoes that are walkable, that you are used to walking in and that your feet feel great. I also think that you should bring two pair of walking shoes because it is better on your back and your knees and everything. If you're wearing one day, one set of walking shoes and the next day, the next set of walking shoes, it's just a little bit better on your body. Well, I'm Kim the Abundant Traveler. Make sure to check out this video on Italy and I appreciate you watching these mistakes to avoid when going to Rome. Thanks so much and I will see you guys very, very soon in Rome or somewhere else in Italy. Take care, chat soon, bye.